Hello everyone, so today we're going to be looking at the Raspberry Pi as well as this LCD screen. And we're going to be taking a little bit more of an in-depth look into the coding and just how this kind of works. So, to first just go over what this is, it's an LCD screen and it can display a bunch of characters. So it has 16 columns here, so there are 16 characters that can be displayed this way, and then there are two rows. So we can have a row here and a row here. And we'll see that in a little bit when we actually start doing a bit of the programming and taking a look at what it can do. So there is just the LCD display, which we can control with these pins, uh, but we aren't going to do that today. We're actually going to be using these four pins at the back to control the LCD. And this is called the I2C LCD. It's kind of controlled by this chip back here. What we can do is first take a look at these four pins. Now, what do all four of these pins do? Well, we have ground, which kind of simple, it connects to our ground pin. We have VCC, which we can connect to our voltage because VCC is just your voltage pin. And we have SDA and SCL pin. So if we take a look at here, this is the um, what all the pins are and what they do. So we look for the J8, which the J8 is up here. So this is the orientation. So we can see that we have an SDA pin right there and an SCL pin right there. They happen to be right beside each other. So we know that we can plug the SDA pin into the SDA and SCL into SCL. So that's pretty simple. For ground, we can connect it to any of the ground pins that are all around or either the five volt pins for the VCC pin. So we'll do that now. And when we do that, we want to kind of follow color conventions. So I have red and black here. Oops. I have red and black here, which we will connect the black to the ground pin. So we normally use black for ground, and we use red for the positive pin or the voltage pin. And then for the data pins, uh, the VDA, or sorry, SDA, and the SCL pins, we use color. So we'll put an orange pin to the SDA and a purple pin into the SCL. So let's give it a 5 volt. So we'll put that into the voltage. Ground into a ground pin. I'll choose this one. And just that alone, actually, we can see it's displaying something. Or at least there's a light that's showing up here. And you can see that there's actually an LED in here, which is shining across this, which is what makes it illuminate. So let's plug in these two pins. So like we said, the orange is going to be our SDA pin. So let's plug that into the SDA, which is the top one. And then our purple pin was the SCL pin, which is right below the SDA pin. So... Now we have it all plugged in and all of our connections connected to their proper uh, spot. So now what can we do? Well, we need to go and program it, but programming this with these four pins is actually a little complicated just because um, we're using the I2C LED uh, chip, meaning we need to install a few things first. So let's take a look at the Raspberry Pi screen here. So here we are, and we're on the Raspberry Pi desktop now. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to configure our I2C. So we're going to go to the terminal. You could click on this or hit Control Alt T, which I'll do now. So Control Alt and T, and then now we have the terminal here. Or if you don't want to do that, you can always go up here to your main menu and then go down to Accessories. And then in there, there's also the terminal down at the bottom there. So you can do any of those methods to open up your terminal. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is type in the following command. So sudo raspi-config or sudo space raspi-config. So sudo raspi-config. And that'll bring you to this menu. And what you want to do in this menu is you want to find the menu that says interfacing options or something along that line. It might be different depending on what version you are on. In my case, it's the third one down here. 
and you can scroll down and what you do with that is you use the arrow keys so you will use the down arrow key and that's the same for all of them so once you're here you'll hit enter and then that'll bring you to the next screen and on this next screen we want to find the i2c port and once again use your arrow keys down hit enter and it'll ask you the following question to be enabled and you will hit yes so just hit enter again and then hit enter again and then down to finish now you have your i2c set up and the next thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that the module has started so you'll put in this following command here and that is ls mod space and then that straight line up and down space grep space i2c and when you hit enter with this command you will see the following so this also might not be the same it can be different but uh, it should look something like this as long as no errors appear um, it could have different numbers at the second part too or it could have a different uh, beginning name depending on what you have plugged in Okay, so now the next command that we're going to do is update a few things, or sorry, install a few things. So we're going to do sudo apt get install i2c tools. So sudo space apt dash get space install space i2c dash tools. And then you'll hit enter on that. It's going to download um, for me it's not going to install anything it says zero for all of those and that is because i've already had it installed so nothing needed to be installed on top of that so after that the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check to the directory so we're going to go and type in i2 c d e t e c t space dash y space one and then you'll hit enter on that and you'll be greeted with this following um, amount of code and what you're looking for here is a number and this could also be different depending on the type of uh, lcd screen that you have but it should look something like this where a number is visible and this should be in hexadecimal so don't worry if there's letters in there as well because hexadecimal does have letters so now that we're done with this, we want to install uh, Symbus. I think that's how you say it anyways. It's S-M-B-U-S, Symbus. And to do that, we want to enter in the following command. That is sudo apt get install python dash Symbus. So sudo apt dash get space install space python dash sm us so sudo apt get install python symbus and i will have all of these down in the description too so you don't have to follow um, everything that i say uh, so you can go down there and copy and paste that so the next thing that you're going to want to do is use your arrow keys and if you hit up you'll actually go to the previous command that you typed in so Instead of hitting enter again, you want to use your left arrow key and you want to go right to the end of Python and then put in a three. So once you put in that three, uh, you'll hit enter again and run the code. So now that you're done that, you've installed everything that you need to do. So once again, all of that's down in the description, all of the code that you need to type in. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is reboot the system. So if for whatever reason throughout this it doesn't work, say you do the ls mod uh, command and it doesn't show anything and you get an error, what you'll want to do is reboot it then. But if everything works up until now, reboot it now. And to reboot, you can just type in reboot and then hit enter. So here we are after the reboot and what we're going to do now is open up the code. So there's three files here and it's not just one file like I showed in the short. It's actually three different files, and one of them is the main file that you'd use to open up the code. So this first one here is really just what tells uh, the rest of the code how to control the LCD. So there's a lot of it here, and you can try to understand it if you like, but you really don't need to. 
And all the three files will be li linked in the description as well, so you can go and download those. And look at them before you run it, just to make sure that you understand it. You know, you shouldn't be trusting random people on the internet. Um, although I can promise you that it will be fine and won't do anything harmful. So we're going to open up this middle file here, and that's basically the main file that we have. So here you can see it, and basically this is what controls the LCD and tells it what to run and what to do. This bottom part here isn't really necessary, it's just some extra that I've talked about in one of my previous shorts. So we're going to hit run here, and then we're going to take a look at the actual LCD and see what it is going on. So now that we're done with the code, um, and we have it running, um, we did all that stuff, we actually have this chip, which is the ADC chip. And the ADC chip is the analog to digital converter, and we use this for the photoresistor and a few other projects that we did. And if you're using this, you also need to do the, those steps first before you use um, this chip. It's a requirement to have um, a I2C port, and then you also need to have some this installed as well. So here's our LCD, but it's we have code running, and as you can see, if I tilt it at that angle, you can actually see um, it showing up, but when I have it straight on, it's, you can't see anything. It's so bright, and that's what this is for. So if it's too bright, you can turn this potentiometer in either way that you'd like and try to make it so you can actually see it. So I have a little screwdriver here, and I'm going to turn it. And let's see what happened when I turn it. Well, now we can't see anything, so I turned it too far in the wrong direction. So we're going to turn it a bit back the other way, and look at that, perfect. You can see it clearly, and yeah. So you can see the temperature of the CPU. So what is? we also have this little thing, and some people are curious about that. That just makes the LED turn on. If you don't have it connected, the LED won't turn on. So we can make this say whatever we want it to say, and all we really need to do is change um, a bit of the code. So here we have the code again, and what we're going to do this time is change the code to make it uh, output something that we want it to output. So as you can see here, we have a few different functions. So this first function here is the part that gets the CPU temperature, and then also the part that gets the time. And then down here is what actually displays the time and CPU temperature. So well, all we need to do is actually just change this part and then we can really output whatever we want. So what we will do is we will delete this part of the code and then, you know, put in a string of characters and, you know, let's just do something like hello world, very basic text. And of course, we need to remember to put it into some quotations so we know it's a text. And then what we'll do is we'll hit run and then look at the LCD and see what happens. And I almost forgot, we also need to add a new line. So we don't want the time and hello world on the same line. So we'll do backslash n and then that'll make a new line. So we'll hit run and see what happens. So probably as we expected, it says hello world and then the time underneath it. So I added a little bit more to it, and I want you guys to make a prediction, maybe pause the video, and think about what it's going to say and what it's going to look like. I also use the LCD clear, which just clears the screen. So here's what it looks like when we hit run. Make sure to like and subscribe, and have a great day. So listen to that, and if you enjoyed this, make sure to check out some of my other videos as well.